look a certain way and I'll move a certain way and talk a certain way and I am. I'll never change. change. <laughs> what did I? What? What did I? What did I have this? This machinery on for? Please don't run away from anything that isn't real. That's your whole shit. Um, Milton Ginsburg, director of Coming Apart and Then Us, tell us about his experiences with Rip Like Us, and I'm going to get off this thing. I'm going to double cross uh, Angelica. I told her I would speak for. Uh, Eight minutes, but I may speak for an hour about it. It's a joke. Uh, Sixty years ago, uh, <clears throat> I'm a senior at Columbia, uh, studying literature, and my aunt, who was a member of a theater group, um, gives me two tickets, and I wasn't interested in theater, gives me two tickets to a play called Sweet Bird of Youth. She says, you love this. My mind is really going. Paul Newman is in it. Geraldine Page is in it. Two movie stars in a play. I'll go. And I leave the theater, realizing I have seen the greatest actor I have ever seen in my life. And he has the funniest name, Rip Torn. And I tell all my friends, this guy is truly the greatest. Uh, But I would be able to put that, that to the test personally. Ten years later, I finished my first screenplay and locked myself in as the director. And I went to Rip and I said, uh, I have a, uh, a screenplay. I hope, uh, I hope you'll read it. And he said, well, I'll tell you right now, I'm only going to do this if I have the male lead, a romantic lead, because nobody ever offers me those kinds of things. I said, well, we got a deal. Uh, the film was never made. I went back to him two years later. And he says, uh, same deal. And the movie was called Coming Apart. And it's the, uh, it's the clip you just saw. And uh, I said, uh, he says, romantic lead? I said, yeah, but it's a lot. <laughs> It's, it's a lot denser. <laughs> I'm going to switch ahead and talk about the clip you saw. So I write this uh, script. It's about a psychiatrist keeping a, a hidden diary, a film diary, to record his obsessive promiscuity and uh, 
basically his disintegration uh, to our film. And Rip will be in it every second of it, except a, 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 a three minute coda at the end. Uh, so I write the script. The script uh, has one scene in there I'm particularly proud of. Uh, it's my existential treatise. I'm convinced it's going to wind up in anthologies with Sartre and Kemmel. <laughs> and you saw the scene, and Rip did it perfectly. And I'm in, looking at the dailies a couple of weeks later. I'm editing the film, and I realize my lines are interfering with Rip's performance. <laughs> uh, but he is uh, sufficiently expressive to represent this guy's breakdown without my lines. So I cut them out and uh, put in, I, I need to do something, I put in these flash frames and these pops and create a correlative for his breakdown. But Rip is doing all the work. Uh, this difficult actor, this impossible actor, this crazy actor, coming apart, was it, we shot coming apart 12 hours a day, six days a week, because I needed a day off during the month. And never once did Rip say, I won't do, and the takes were between five and 10 minutes. And if you got through three quarters of a, of a, of a scene and, and blew a line, it was a wash. Rip never once said, I won't do another take. Sometimes they'd say, you know, Rip, we have it for the camera. It's beautiful. It's great. We have a little time. Let's try and do it entirely differently. Let's hit the notes differently. And, and Rip would say, let's do it every time. Rip had more, carried more personal vulnerability and anguish inside of himself than any person I ever knew in my life. And, uh, and that was the curse and the gift uh, that made him such an incredible actor. Incredible actor. I say, uh, you know, Olivier and Brando were bigger than life, but they couldn't do authentic life as well as Rip could. I don't think. So, uh, rest in peace, R.I.P. Rip, rest in peace. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Rip was the antithesis, the purest antithesis of rest in peace. Uh, I suspect whatever heaven is, wherever it is, uh, Rip is now putting together a production of <laughs> Tennessee or Strindberg <laughs> with himself in the lead <laughs> because he never got his due as a romantic lead and I think it was his the penalty he paid for stealing every scene he was in. I'll miss you, buddy. Welcome to uh, the actor studio, Rip Torn Memorial Uncensored. I'd love anyone who speaks or doesn't speak to tell it like it was, tell it like it is. Don't be shy. Um, the only thing is, um, Milton got to speak a lot longer than three minutes, um, mainly because he was the first person who asked quite a bit of time ago, and it's the 50th anniversary of coming apart.